Imagine for a moment all the designs you knew were just outlines and structures. No colors, no shades, not even black or white fields. What if we took away the color fields of letters of the alphabet? Would you still be able to read it? Imagine your eyes could only see things in black and white and colors never existed. Do you think you'd still call the world a beautiful place? I believe the answers to these questions, my friend, would be negative. Just imagine the Coca-Cola brand is represented like this. How about this? It is better than before now, isn't it? So we can say colors are useful. But then again, I believe you still feel different about this because you already know the Coca-Cola brand to be this. But even though we had colors on it here, it still didn't resonate the Coca-Cola brand feeling. The world knows it and likes it. So let me take you back in time to understand this better. As far back as the 1800s, pictures can really be found in black and white. Until a man by the name of Edmond Becquerel created colored photographs. The colors in his photographs were unstable too, and hence the colors faded quickly. Then in 1855, a man by the name of James Clerk Maxwell suggested a three color method. But it was not until 1907 when the Lemaire brothers, Auguste and Louis, created the positive process for autochrome. The world of colored photograph and are looking to stay thanks to this. So we ask, what's the secret behind colors that resonate harmoniously? In the realm of design, color theory is the bedrock upon which captivating visuals are built. And at its core are three primary colors in addictive art, red, blue, and yellow. In subtractive art, red, blue, and green. These hues are the foundation for the complex symphony of shades and tints. The wheel takes us even further back in time, down to the times of Sir Isaac Newton, in the year 1666. Isaac Newton used the triangular prism to split a beam of white light into a rainbow, proving that white light composes of spectrums of hues. He then arranged these colors into a circle, showing the relationship between them. Hence, the color wheel we have today and use was derived from him. As a designer, understanding the color wheel is like understanding the basics of creating colors and how colors work in the first place. Knowing how one color gently slides into becoming another and how the results you see came about to be is a basic knowledge necessary for every designer. You would find that red becomes orange before it fully turns into a yellow, or that purple is a close neighbor to red due to the mixture of a certain quantity of blue in it. The color wheel holds the foundation to color secrets used by designers over the years. Do you think colors do evoke emotions as strongly as words can? Although no specific answer has been attributed to this question, I want you to take a look at these pictures. I'm sure one didn't look familiar, but aside of that, you have associated it to the products the rest ones offer. Because you already know these other brands and what they offer, when this came up, you felt it offered the same or something similar to others. It's not just structure of the logo design. It's the fact that your senses have immediately attributed these colors to this product sold by these brands, making you instantly feel that this logo is associated with a company that deals with similar products. Warm colors are not just all for mere beautification or adorning a random design. They also showcase the feelings the designer wants to portray to the viewers. The color choices send the message to the viewers. Just as musical composition requires a careful arrangement of notes, where one note melodiously leads into the other. Color harmony requires a thoughtful orchestration of hues. 
just like the rush of fear that envelops your mind at the sight of blood. Dry dark blood would not make you fret the same way until you realize it is blood. In these cases, as you can see, the object does command a certain behavior and feeling. But the colors have long triggered the feeling of its own before the object did. Every color conveys a certain emotion in design. As a designer, you ought to know how to play that knowledge to your advantage. Like the example I gave earlier on using successful brands and their colors to somehow trick your perception of a new logo, so do you as a designer have to understand how colors can be used to direct your viewers to a certain kind of way and a certain kind of feelings and thought patterns. And brands have long harnessed these emotional languages of colors to communicate their identities and their values. Consider the bold red of Coca-Cola, which invokes enthusiasm and energy. Or the scenery blue of Facebook, fostering trust and connection. Take a look at the vibrant yellow of McDonald's, sparking joy and playfulness. These hues are more than just corporate colors. They are emotional ambassadors, communicating messages that go beyond words. Color choices can bridge map the gap between the designer and the viewers, thereby creating an immediate and visceral connection. Think about the last time a design resonated with you on an emotional level. Chances are the color scheme played a significant role. Whether it was the sense of nostalgia, excitement, tranquility, fear, joy, happiness. Colors trigger memories and associations that create a lasting bond. By understanding emotion and each color, you can ignite and strategically use them to convey messages. We breathe life into our creations by making them resonate deeply with the audience through the colors we apply in our work. How can you paint the perfect emotion with colors? The act of selecting harmonious color palette is like choosing the right words for a compelling story. Knowing now that colors convey emotions and affect psychology, we now understand that in the world of graphic design, colors are not mere elements, they are storytellers. They carry the messages, set the mood, and breathe the life into your creations. But choosing the right palette is more than just picking shades and random colors and hues. It's a deliberate process that demands the finesse and insights. Every design has a purpose, and your color palettes must align with that purpose. Consider the context, whether it's a brand logo, a design, a poster, a website, any artwork whatsoever. The colors you choose should affect the essence of what you are representing. Vibrant hues to amplify energy create excitement. Muted tones to convey sophistication and tranquility. Though color evoke emotions, interpretations may vary across cultures and demographics. When crafting a color palette, consider your target audience carefully. What emotions do you want to invoke in them? Research the cultural association of colors to ensure your design communicates effectively across all borders. Red stands for love and excitement, but again, red also stands for danger and warning. The rules of three is a design principle that applies to color palettes as well. Aim for a primary color, secondary color, and then an accent color. The primary color sets the tone, the secondary adds depth, and the asset color brings attention to the key elements. It's just like the three-way lighting. This tree reforms the backbone of your palettes, ensuring coherence and balance. You really don't have to be a color expert to in palettes. There are online tools and generators that can help you explore endless color combinations. Even designing apps like Illustrator, Photoshop, Inkscape, Krita, Blender, and many more have color wheels in them. Use it as a guide when selecting your colors. The journey has been long. Thank you for joining us on this ODC True Color Harmony. But before you go, what's your favorite color technique? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Do well to like and subscribe for more of deeper dives into design insights, inspiration, and creative journeys. Stay connected to us through our LinkedIn websites and newsletters and website blog as we sign off from this viral journey. 
we leave you with these thoughts. In the end, we can all say letters and structures are like faces, but the colors on your design are their facial expressions. Maybe that's why they are called type faces.